flooding emergency along coastal cities today in South Florida as rising tides are leading to flooded streets. Another night of tidal flooding on Miami. Florida reportedly has the most number of big cities at risk from rising sea level. Scientific models predict most of Miami Beach could be underwater by the end of the century. I think that in every generation, there's going to be a big cause. There's going to be a challenge or a war. I think today we have sea level rise and climate change. On the 6th Street, 10th okay. Street, and all the, you know, like uh, West Perfect. Avenue spots. Perfect. And it's important. We have to have these everywhere more. because... I, I'm on top of his head. Good. He can't breathe. Over. The more we yeah. communicate with the people, the yeah. better they yeah. understand yeah. what yeah. we're doing. Yeah. That's the whole point. Because we are rising above. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So what was going on, and people were seeing it more and more, is we were having what's called sunny day flooding. Can you imagine? It's a beautiful sunny day on Miami Beach, which we have many of. And all of a sudden, in certain streets, we would see water coming up through our drains. So the streets would actually become flooded, which is very unnerving to the residents and the tourists. It's been happening over a period of many years, but it seems over the last three, four, five, six, seven years, it's gotten worse and it's gotten faster. We had areas where cars got underwater a bit, where it went into the bottom of the cars and ruined cars. The big challenge we have is that, you know, in a city like Miami Beach, there are certain roads that are city roads and there are certain roads that are state roads. So, for example, one of the main roads in our city is a state road called Indian Creek Drive. And this road, underwater, 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 but it's not our road, it's the state of Florida. And the difficulty we're having is convincing the governor and the secretary of transportation that they need to fix their roads. But unfortunately, we have an administration in Tallahassee that doesn't believe in sea level rise. We can show them that there are fish on the street. Water is coming over and this road is, you know, you can't even go on it, we had to close it down. We were forced to take immediate action. Uh, and of course, I didn't realize as a mayor you had to become a hydrologist, but we all kind of learned very quickly. And we have found that where we attack, we beat back the water. Historically, the way the water would leave our city, it would go down the drains and it would go out our seawalls back into the bay. Because the water level has risen so high in the bay, the actual outfalls on the seawalls are under the water level. So what happens is the water reverses course and comes out our drains onto the street. So what did we do? Number one, we put on one-way flex valves. So now the water goes out, and then the flex valve closes, the water can't return in. The second thing is, is that in order for that water to get out of that one-way flex valve back into the bay, we had to put in pumps. It's basically taking the water that's coming through our drainage system and pushing it out, opens up the flex valve, and the water goes back into the bay, raising our roads. We're literally building on top of our existing roads and making our roads higher. If your roads are higher, they, they won't get flooded. A third thing, of course, is seawalls. If the bay gets too high, it won't go over the seawall. The seawall will protect the area. Our current plan is, is sort of how do we stay relatively dry for the next 30 to 50 years. The real long-term issue now is um, how do we create a sustainable community that includes our land use codes, um, you know, our building codes and materials? Do we need to go to a landscaping plan that deals with more salt-tolerant you know, species? How do we help individual property owners? How do they raise their houses? Or what, what's the alternative there? Is an insurance company going to insure that home? Will rates go up? The early focus had been on the engineering solution. Now we've got to figure out what's our strategy going forward. We don't have all the answers. Uh, we have a lot of questions still, a lot of questions. Really what comes down to, of course, is predictions. Do we know really the real predictions? You have someone say five feet and three feet and two feet and six inches, and I think there's no necessary, really true prediction. A lot of people say, you know, well, uh, your pumps, you're raising streets, you're changing building codes, you're raising seawalls, that's going to last you 30, 40, 50 years. And I said, you know what, that may be true. But I believe in human innovation and I believe in entrepreneurship. I believe we're going to have such solutions through innovation in the next 20, 30 years that we're going to be astounded. I think we're going to be able to shoot the water down below, way below the aquifer. Uh, I think they're going to be able to pull water out of our city. We may need to potentially have, uh, you know, little levees going through certain areas to carry water. I'm not sure. But I know that uh, I believe in human innovation, and I know that Miami Beach is not going anywhere, as well as all the world coastal cities. When you look at this map, you realize most of South Florida is fairly low lying. So even though a lot of the talk is about Miami Beach, sea level rise is going to impact everything here along the coast. It's going to impact the Keys, and certainly you know, the Everglades, which are a freshwater, a brackish water ecosystem. There is no handbook. That's the real challenge we're facing. 
There is no handbook. No community has really done this. We're sort of at the front line of it, which is exciting um, and frightening at the same time. We show that we can make progress. We show that we have the formula. We know what to do. Now we're going to roll out this program citywide. It's a $400 million program. It's going to take another four or five years. Right now we're shouldering the entire cost ourselves as a city. Uh, we really need state help. We need federal help. Yeah, the flooding is a problem, but I think, I think it will be good because we need to cleanse this area. Alton Road, was a, it was just a flood every single day, and I got a young daughter, and it's like I'd show her, and she now she points out, look, the bridge is filled over with the tide. It's, it's definitely frightening. If Miami Beach is going to be here 100 years from now, it probably won't look like this. The reality is, we may have to learn to live with a little bit of water, like they do in Venice, like they do in the Netherlands. Um, we may have to do that as well in the long term. I want to be the mayor of Miami Beach. I don't want to be the mayor of Venice. Whether it's Florida, whether it's the United States, we're, we're pardon the expression, we're all in the same boat. Seas are rising, climate change is a reality, and you can see it right here in Miami Beach, this wonderful, incredible city in, in Florida, in the United States of America.